southern part of Indiana yet. But uh, on my way, I'll get there hopefully pretty soon. Anyway, uh, you know, it's me again, your favorite Texas trucker. Got something I wanted to talk to you about today. I've got, because of my videos and because of a forum that I'm on and some stuff that I've done on the forum, I've got several people who have made a commitment to come to work at Mellis Transfer, and that's awesome you know, because Mellis is a good company. Um, but you know, uh, I've talked to y'all, you know, quite a bit about the debt that I got myself into, and so uh, my main purpose in, in coming and doing these videos, you know, I'm going to say it's my main purpose, because my main purpose is to, is to keep in contact with my family, but one of the, the big reasons that I do this is because I want to help people to uh, transition into this lifestyle, you know, and... Uh, make a success as a truck driver, whether it's as a company driver, you know, owner-operator, which I don't really know a lot about at the moment, you know, I'm working on learning because I want to become an owner-operator or whatever the case may be. And of course, if you come to Mellis and you use my name, you know, tell them that you were referred to the Mellis by me, then I get a bonus, and the bonus is like $100. I need that, to, you know, every penny that I get helps me get closer to being out of debt, you know. And, uh, so anyway, I've had a lot of people that, that have contacted me, you know, and they've said, hey, you know, I'm starting school at Mellis, or I'm going to school at Mellis, or I'm, I'm going to school, and I'm at, you know, Mellis Academy, and I put your name down as a reference, you know, and I'm like, man, that's great, you know, and I appreciate it, because, you know, I need that to help pay off the bills that I have. Do this for the references. I do it to help people, but I, the references, you know, definitely help me. You know, and and I, I man, I really appreciate it. You know, when you guys put me down as a reference. But you know, a guy asked me the other day, uh, another guy that's going to put me down as a reference. He asked me the other day. He says, um, "How much do you get?" From, uh, from a, a referral. Well, you know, the answer, from my understanding, is $100. But I've never gotten one. You know? And, you know, when they when they confirm that you've gotten a referral and that you're going to get, you know, $100, they send you a call on message. I never received one. So I got to thinking, you know, I've got at least two or three guys that, you know, that uh, are at the school right now out with a trainer right now who said they put me in as a reference so I'm going to call and I'm going to find out so I called recruiting and I talked to Deborah and I explained that you know I had been told by several people that um, you know they put me down as a reference there were six people that that I had re I had remembered right um, and so she runs their names, and the first one that I, I gave up, the one that I had really the most confidence in, um, she said he quit. He left the school. And, uh, I mean, it, it caught me by surprise, you know. I mean, I don't know what the reason was. I haven't talked to him. Uh, I haven't sent him a message or anything, you know. I, mean, I don't know why he decided to quit, you know. I don't know. Maybe it bothers me a little bit because you know sometimes I feel like you know if, if maybe I I had told y'all um, you know more stuff maybe you know you'd be more equipped to make you know the decision and you know you'd be in it for the long haul you know and, and uh, so anyway you know one of the guys they um, quit you know then she tells me that another of the guys that I listed dropped out of school, the one before him, and that he didn't make it, and two of them are in class right now, and two of them are waiting to either uh, be approved or are waiting on a class right now, 
and um, and so yeah, I don't get a bonus until they complete the class. And, you know, and, and, and you know, the bonus aside, you know, I mean, I, I, it's that's not what's really that important. I mean, yeah, I need it. It'll help me. You know, it's. Uh, do everything that I can to bring as much money as I can in to, you know, correct the screw up that I made taking out all this debt. But you know, the bonus aside, you know, um, when you sign those papers for Millis to come to school, you're signing a contract to work for him for a year, and you're signing a financial commitment of five thousand dollars. All right. Now. 500 of that $5,000 is going to be paid up front. So that's already going to be out of pocket. You pay $400 your first day of school. You pay $100 on the phone to reserve your spot in class. All right, so you'll have already paid $500. So the remaining commitment is going to be $4,500. Of that $4,500, uh, 2500 of it is forgiven once you've worked for Millis for a year. The other $2,000 is taken out of your check in, in 100 deductions of $20 a piece, okay? Now that's, for those of you that that, uh, that that are not able to calculate real quickly, that is four weeks short of, of uh, two years, okay? Now, I want you to think about that because when you come to school at Millis, most of you are not really financially stable. I wasn't, you know. I mean, I had to borrow money in order to uh, get my job at Millis. I had to borrow money and, and sell off stuff in order to afford, you know, to come here. And, uh, you know, and, and when you make that decision and you quit, then you have automatically instantly accrued a $4,500 debt. You know, and, and a, a debt that's not gonna, you're not getting anything for because you quit before you even got your CDL. You know, it wasn't just that you quit, but you quit before you even accomplished what you went to the, to, to the class to quit. If you got your CDL and then you decided that working for Millis wasn't really for you, left and you went and got another driving job somewhere else, well then at least the $4,500 that you're going to have to pay back uh, at least went towards something, you know. But if if you quit before you even finish the class, then you get nothing out of it. You get nothing out of it and still have to pay $4,500. And, you know, it's just, I want y'all to stop. Right? And, and think. And I want y'all to, you know, to weigh the consequences of this type of a job. And, you know, I want y'all to, to decide for real whether or not you're able to, you know, to, to do this over the long run. So I'm going to lay out some things for you. Alright? For those of you who have families, especially if you're young, and you haven't been married very long. For those of you who have families, wives, husbands, you know, children, daughters, sons, whatever, uh, you really, really need to get together with your significant other, whoever the significant other might be, whether it's a husband or a wife. You need to consider the needs of your children, right, if you have children. And then together, y'all need to make the decision. This is what you're going to be. This is what the decision is going to be. Okay. If you if you go and you take a job as an over-the-road truck driver, and I don't care what company you're with. But right now, I'm not talking companies. If if you're going to take a job with an, as an over-the-road truck driver, understand that you are not going to make money unless you stay out for an extended period of time. Right, let that sink in. Let that sink in and understand it because that is what this job requires. 
this time out, as I'm making this video, I will be out for five weeks. Five weeks without seeing my family. Five weeks without touching my wife. Five weeks without hugging my kids. Five weeks without eating dinner at home. Five weeks without sleeping in my bed. You know, five weeks. Well, that's how long I'm going to be out here. That's five weeks of not going to football games or karate practice or, um, you know, sitting down and watching TV and eating popcorn with the family. Five weeks of not being around your family. That's how long I've been out here this time. And, and five weeks is short. Some companies require six, eight, nine weeks. There's some people that stay out for three, four months at a time. You know, I've found that, that three weeks out and, you know, 26 days out, four days in, you know, makes for a pretty decent set of paychecks. And it works for me. Um, I'm out five weeks this time because there was an extra week in the month. We need extra money, so I took the, you know, extra time out, you know, and, and, um, and, and it's, it's not easy, okay? Um, it's easy for you to sit on a couch at home and think about it, talk about it, and say, ah, we could do it, you know, five weeks, you know, I mean, that's no big deal. Three weeks, you know, that's no big deal. We're making good money, we can handle it. It's a whole different thing when you're actually out here on the road and the wife's at home upset about something or the kids are at home acting up and, you know, you're out here way away or the car breaks down or, or, um, or you know, y'all just suddenly realize that, you know, this is much more of a commitment than you expected. You know, it's it's too late to back out. I mean, you know, it's too late for you to say, oh, well, I didn't know it was going to be like this. I can't handle it. You know, and you've got to understand up front, from the very beginning, all right, before you ever start, that you're not going to be home. Okay, get that through your thick-ass heads. You are not going to be home. You're going to be gone a lot. All right? This industry has huge failure rate. The overwhelming majority of first-year drivers do not make it six months. They quit or they get washed out before that time occurs because they don't realize the cost of being out here on the road in time away from family. Get that through your head because it, you're wasting your money, you're ruining your credit, you know, and, and honestly, it's a stupid move to, to, you know, and I'm sorry if this offends anybody because I'm, I'm not meaning to offend anybody and I'm not meaning to call anybody stupid, but it's a stupid move to accumulate $4,000 worth of debt, $4,500 worth of debt that you're not even going to use to even get a CDL. You know, it, it's, it's, it does not make sense. You're flushing to money down the drain. If you start this school, finish it. Finish it. If you finish it and you get your own truck and you decide this ain't for me, you know, this ain't for me, I don't want to do it, and I'm going to quit, and you're going to take that, that hit, and you're going to accumulate the debt, then at least you have a CDL. At least you accomplished something in getting the job. You can go get a job somewhere else once you've got your CDL. It may not be easy, but you can do it. You know, But you're not going to accomplish anything at all if you leave before you even get your CDL. Second thing to understand about this job is, is you know, you're living in a confined quarters for the whole time that you're out here. All right, this is a <clears throat> this is essentially oh I don't know maybe eight foot by seven foot box, you know something like that, an eight foot by seven foot box, barely bigger than a prison cell. You know, hell, it may not be bigger than a prison cell. It may be smaller than a prison cell, actually. Um, you know, and this is what you're living in the entire time that you're out here. So you don't have very much stuff. You know, you it could think of it like you're camping out for five weeks at a time. All right, you're camping out for five weeks. You don't have a shower in the truck. You don't have a toilet in the truck. You know, um, you, you, unless you have an inverter or some kind of a power source, you don't have a microwave in the truck. You don't have a coffee pot in the truck. 
you know, you don't have anything in the truck. You know, once you get an inverter, well, you know, that changes. But still, what you have in the truck is extremely limited. Um, it's limited to the space that you have, you know, and it's limited to, you know, the the storage, you know, that you that you have available in order to, um, you know, have food and, and stuff like that. So, uh, and it's not much. You don't have much space. Period. You, know, you have to deal with that. So you can be uncomfortable. I mean, you may have to go two, three days without a shower before you can even get someplace long enough to take a shower. That's just something that you need to, to learn to understand and, and accept that if you're going to be part of this, you know, this industry. The next thing to understand is that the truck driving industry has a really, really large divorce rate. Um, you know, honestly, there's just not a lot of spouses that can deal with you being, you know, gone as long as you're gone. It takes a special kind of spouse to, uh, you know, to be the spouse of a truck driver. It's, it's um, you know, we're, we're not at war and we're not in any real danger at any particular time, you know. But it's kind of the same thing as a military spouse, you know. I mean, they've got to be um, prepared for you to be gone all the time. And I'm not trying to compare what a truck driver does with what a soldier does by any means of the imagination. Um, you know, because soldiers are out there giving their lives, you know, for our freedom. We're just out here driving, you know. But uh, it's the separation is what I'm talking about, you know. Uh, it takes a special kind of spouse. A spouse that can, you know, they can afford you being gone as long as, the, as, long as you're gone. Um, you know, they can, they can deal with that, you know. A spouse that can deal with the problems that come up without having to rely on you to to be there to fix it, you know. Um, that's the kind of that's the kind of, of spouse that's required, you know. And, and uh, you know, the fact that you're going to be gone, you know, a long time creates its own frictions, you know, with with your relationship. Uh, you know, long-term relationships by you know by themselves have difficulty. You have to change the way that you. You know that you deal with one another, change the way that you meet each other's needs. You know you have to, um, you know you have to understand the, the, the problems that separation itself causes. Um, you know that that stress is going to be on your kids also. You know your kids are always going to be. You know when is when is he, when is he coming home? You know, and, uh, my wife told me last night that. You know, my son was sitting there with, we've got a, a spare CV at the house, you know, and uh, my son had found it on the side of the road. And it is, it's, it's cute in one way and it's sad in another, you know. Um, you know, and, it, and, and, and in yet another way it makes me feel good, you know, because my son found the CV. Um, you know, it doesn't work. I may very well take it and see if it can be fixed, you know, after what I heard last night. Um, but, you know, he, she went into the to the other other room and she, you know, she heard him sitting there with the CB saying, you know, break one nine for Millis 2091, you know, and that's my truck. And, um, you know, the radio didn't even work. You know, she told him, she said, man, he can't hear you, he's too far up north. And he's like, well, maybe if I keep trying, he can hear me, you know. And, uh, so anyway, uh, later, he put the, um, he put the, um, CV under the couch and told my wife, he was putting it there in case I, in case I called later. You know, and, and uh, you know, that's what I'm talking about. You're going to be gone. And my kids are going to be missing. Them. The good thing about that is, is that I'm going to be calling safety today to get the paperwork sent to me so that I can uh, I can get him put on the approved list, get the insurance, the writer insurance started so that I can get um, him out here on the truck with me next month leave out this month he's coming with me you know and he'll be out here with me this whole time but
but you got to be aware of the fact that you're going to be gone and you're going to be missing times with your kids. You know, uh, and you need to be prepared for that. If you can't be prepared for all of that, and if you can't do all of that, if you can't uh, make the commitment to this lifestyle for at least a year, then don't even apply. Don't even apply for the job. You know, uh, just admit that you're not going to be able to, to do it, and that you're not going to be able to give that much time away, and find you something else that you'll be happy with doing, because this job. It requires a commitment, and, and it requires a strong commitment. The long-term, um, the long-term benefits of the commitment are worth it, but it takes a long time to get there to that. You know, I, I grew up wanting to be a truck driver. I've always wanted to be a truck driver. Um, I let other things get me sidetracked from that. And, uh, and and I ended up with a job that I liked. I mean, I liked being a tattoo artist. But in the end, the job as a tattoo artist, you know, fell, fell through. It didn't make it. And I remember when things first started going bad for for us with the, with the tattoo business, and and right then I was going to quit. I was going to shut it down before it got too bad, and I was going to go and get a job as a truck driver. And I didn't do it. I, instead, I I just I kept the business open, you know, because I didn't want to fail at it. And so I didn't make the the commitment at that time. You know, maybe I wasn't ready for it. You know, I don't know. The kids were younger. You know, um, Andrew was only seven at the time, or six, six or seven at the time. I think he was six. Um, you know, the the older one, Miles, he was only like 11, uh, 10 or 11, something like that. Maybe 10, 10 or 11 anyway. Um, you know, and, and I didn't want to be away from them, you know, that that long. I, I didn't, you know, I don't know. There was a lot of reasons why I didn't do it. None of them were any good, but I look back now, now that I'm out here, now that I'm doing this, now that I am uh, driving, you know, and on one hand, I'm glad that I had those years with the boys. On the other hand, you know, I kind of wish that I had gone ahead and made the commitment then, because if I had made the commitment then, I'd be an owner-operator now, and I would be able to you know, have the freedom that I needed to do the things that I need to do, you know, and, and be the person that I need to be, you know, and I don't even know if I'm making sense. But the bottom line is, is that it takes a long time to get where you need to be and you know to get into this industry just to quit and, and just to give up quitting is easy quitting is is the easiest thing in the world that you'll ever do anytime the going gets tough you can just quit and walk away you know anytime that you know you get too too financially, you know, overwhelmed, you can just quit and walk away. But what's hard is to quit quitting. That's what's hard. Because once you start quitting, it's so easy to quit that stopping that habit is almost impossible. So if you can't make the commitment long term to be in this industry, don't make the commitment at all, period. That's just what I got to say about it. All right. So Y'all take care. And, um, you know, hopefully the message has helped somebody. You know, until next time, y'all peace out.